I'm here today with Deborah Rodriguez. She is the author of the best-selling memoir, The Kabul Beauty School, which was published in 2007. She is here today to talk about her new novel called A Cup of Friendship. Um, would you like to start with a little synopsis of your book? Uh, yeah, The Cup of Friendship. Um, I think if you go to the background, you know, I, I went to Afghanistan and I started beauty schools. And then while I was there, I was there for five years. So while I was there, I opened up a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And so I had this um, just this amazing variety of people that walked into the coffee shop. I felt very privy to having this experience of, you know, your missionaries, your mercenaries, mm -hmm. you know, UN, you name it, Afghans, all walking into this. And so this, the, the, the book is set in a coffee house. And the main character, or one of the one of the five, there's five very strong women in the book, and you know they it's described as ordinary women in an extraordinary place. I'm I would say they're a little above ordinary. Mm -hmm. I mean they are in Afghanistan, and so these the book is set there as uh, one of the characters is an American woman who um, is an owner of a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I am not that woman. Yeah. Um, she is a mix of, um, of a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. But so it's basically the, the life and the story and it's all this stuff that I don't think that the news, um, you would never see this part of Afghanistan in the news mm -hmm. and so it's a really an interesting window into Afghans and to the foreigners who work there and to kind of everyday life of Afghanistan um, it gives a comp you know you're you're dealing with war right the bottom line is it's Afghanistan and it, there is a war mm -hmm. and so it's hard to have this uh, I mean when when people talk about war or when I talk to people about war and human trafficking and the abuse of women, um, I, I sometimes they glaze over. Mm -hmm. So my goal with this book was to entertain and educate. Mm -hmm. And so here you got, could be a cozy read by a fireplace with, you know, your favorite drink or a right. beach read. And it is an easier read, but yet it's very strong topics mm -hmm. and so it, it's that it's war but it's friendships right. it's the bonds mm -hmm. that these women um some people you know if you've not lived out of the country the one thing that you have is an expatriate community mm -hmm. and so the friendships happen very quickly you're bonded by one thing you could be rich or poor or working for the UN or be a mercenary whatever the case is right. and in your real life you may never be friends with these people mm -hmm. you know I mean they may be just a total different people group than what you would ever normally socialize with right. but in Afghanistan you're all bonded by one common thread right. you live in a war zone mm -hmm. and so this takes that thread. Yeah. So. So your first book was a memoir. It was about your experiences in, you know, setting up a school to train hairdressers um, in Afghanistan, in Kabul. Right. And this one, you know, even though it's it's about setting up a coffee shop, you did decide to write it as fiction. Exactly. Yeah. Was that? Why did you decide to to make that change when you could have probably written another memoir? The, the, yeah, it's possible, mm -hmm. but um, you know, what I really there was certain topics mm -hmm. that I really wanted to um, hit strongly in the okay. book. One of them was I I wanted I wanted to bring fundamentalist like the traditional. Um, what we would be kind of scared of maybe that the zealot uh, young Afghan right. that is you know very religious mm -hmm. and is I wanted to I wanted to show him I wanted to show his heart 
And that was important. I wanted to show the abuse of money in Afghanistan. Okay. I wanted to touch base on um, how do the Afghans see this? I wanted to touch base. I wanted to talk about the different ethnic groups. Right. And, you know, the different people who are working there. To me, that started to get really, really personal. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, I, I think that, you know, one of the stories is a pretty harsh story. Mm -hmm. That could have gotten me killed. So I would have had to eliminate that story completely. And right. I thought it was really worthy, um, you know, uh, to, to talk about. Right. And I wanted to talk about um, the prison system. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And so there was some serious things that I wanted to touch base on. And I, I felt that my palate... You know, it's like I could put more things in it, and I could um, I had more freedom, more creative stuff that, you know, more creative stuff. And it's like I, it was really important that each story that was told mm -hmm. could have really happened in real life. So okay. I wanted that to take place, and um, that, that was crucial. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we state a lot of facts in here about, you know, the, the, um, the child birthing and right. this sort of thing. Um, you know, we state figures and facts, and those are real. So, you know, it, was, it just seemed more logical to go with, uh, with fiction. fiction. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that a lot of this concerns the expatriate community right. in Kabul, but two of the, I think, most compelling characters are Afghan women. Yes. And um, particularly with Halajan, who has some, you know, issues with Afghan culture, you know, and has seen a lot of changes in her life. Was it hard to get inside her head and depict, you know, how she was feeling? No, she was actually really easy because there's a lot of those women okay. in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of the older Afghans, especially some and more the educated, mm -hmm. educated Afghans, they they've lived through like wearing mini skirts right. and now they're going back to having to wear a burqa. Mm -hmm. I mean these women, you know, and there's always that salty sort of character and she is. Yeah. She's I think everybody knows one of these women. Yeah. Whether it's their aunt or their grandmother or something, you know, mm -hmm. we all um have one of these women in our life. Mm -hmm. You know. I feel like it's not a character that you really see in when you hear stories about the treatment of women in Middle Eastern countries or in Afghanistan or in, you know, mm -hmm. any place really where there's trouble, you don't really, t they're kind of the forgotten right. characters. So I really like to see that because you can identify with her so much. Right. And yeah. the thing is, is I think what I, what was um, another thing I wanted to, that was important to the book is, when you read a book about Afghanistan, you can't identify with it. Yeah. There, there's, it's, there's no slot in your head to file, oh, I've, I'm forced to be married, I'm this, I'm that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, because they are just like us in one aspect or another. Mm -hmm. And so to make it so you could relate to an Afghan woman. Yeah. And the setting of a coffee house everybody can relate to. Absolutely. And so all of a sudden now you're in common ground. Now you're comfortable and you're you're visualizing sitting there having your cup of coffee, doing your internet. Mm -hmm. So it brings the reader who may never go there into this comfortable place. Yeah. Where they now like, oh okay. And I think they're learning something as they read. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, do you find that um do you ever worry about how your work is received in Afghanistan? I mean, some of your characters hold pretty strong opinions about, you know, how 
how, about their views on Afghan culture. Have you ever been concerned for your own safety? Um, with, I, this book is just out. So, right, right, right. Yeah. I, Any troubles with Kabul Beauty School? I, there was a little bit of trouble. Okay. Um, I, it was, it was more of my security issue that was the trouble. I mean, the, there was a kind of a whirlwind of stuff that happened right after book came out. And, you know, now things have just calmed down and everybody's fine and the right. girls are all working and, you know, but it was a lot of media and a lot of stuff going on all at the same time. It was very complicated. Yeah. Afghanistan is a very, very complicated place. Right. And if you think you have it figured out, if you think you can predict what's going to happen, a reaction or anything, mm -hmm. you're wrong. I mean, if we could have predicted Afghanistan, we would not still be there. Right. So it's 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 like peeling back an onion. You know, there's layer after layer after layer and you think you got it figured out. Oh no, I'm not going to have any trouble. Boom, you got trouble. Yeah. So it it's hard to say. I mean, I I have a tendency to be politically correct to a point. Mm -hmm. I have a huge respect for the Afghan people. I love, I think you can feel my heart in the book. Absolutely. I have a, a love for the people. Mm -hmm. And so I don't feel that there's, I mean, the negative stuff that would be in the book, it's reality. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so how can you get really angry about something that's a reality? Right. 